thing over again. So let's just go over um, exactly solving rational expressions. Now, if you guys remember, basically what we solving rational expressions is basically going to kind of combine of what we did last class period um, when we're adding and subtracting. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, when we want to solve a rational expression, just like when we're solving fractions, if you guys remember, if we had a problem, you know, a fraction problem, uh, just for instance, like a side example, if I had like one third, you know, x minus one fourth equals five uh, sixth or something. If you guys remember, what we did was when we solved an equation with fractions, one of the tips that I said was get rid of the fractions, right? So to get rid of a fraction of a problem like this, what we had to do was multiply it by the least common denominator. So you looked at 3, 4, and 6, and you said, what was the least common denominator between 3, 4, and 6, which would have been 12? So the least common denominator equals 12. So when we multiply, what we do is we'd multiply everything by 12. Let me do a different color. So if I multiply this by 12, this by 12, and this by 12, what you guys saw is all of my denominators all divide into 12. So therefore, I end up getting an, an equation as 4x minus 3 equals 10. Because 6 divides into 12 2 times, 2 times 5 is 10. Now you can solve the equation. Would everybody agree with me? Did everybody say that? So when you're solving rational, um, rational equations, that's going to be kind of the same process. Except now we have a little bit more of a difficult, because now we have x in the denominator. So that's going to be a part of our LC, um, LCD. So does anybody have any idea of what our LCD will be for this example? 3x. So I just write out LCD equals 3x. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to want to do now is just multiply everything by 3x, each one of our terms. So by multiplying by 3x, all right, what we have is, you guys can see here, that my x's divide to 1. Here, my 3's divide to 1. And here, my x's divide to 1. Does everybody see that? Yes, no? Any questions? It's early in the morning. You guys had a whole weekend. If you have a question, feel free just to let me know. I'll be happy to like, re-explain anything. All right, I guess we're good on that. So now I just multiply across. So I have 3 times 2, which is going to provide me with 6. Here I have plus 5x equals 7 times 3, which is 21. Now I just go ahead and solve. So I subtract 6. Subtract, subtract 6, so I have 5x is going to equal 15. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 3. OK? Does everybody see that? Yes, no? Now, there is one caveat that we need to make sure that we're doing when we're doing uh, rational expressions, is we we're going to want to make sure we check our answer, make sure that this answer Excuse me, you're going to work. Now, if you guys remember looking at your constraints, what is the only value x cannot equal? What can we have not have x on our denominator? If you remember writing our constraints, x cannot equal, what could x not be in this problem? Yeah? Zero, right? You just can't have zero, because you put zero, and then that, that would make that zero in the denominator. So we know x cannot equal zero. So you're going to want to write that in your answer. So x equals 3, and x cannot equal 0. And then the other thing is, let's just go ahead and double check our answer, make sure that that works. So I'd have 2 thirds plus 5 thirds equals 7 thirds. And obviously, does that make sense? Yeah, that works. 